As we're facing this occupational health as well as generally medical and health crisis, we thought who did better to reach out to in terms of where the trucking industry is headed in this regard than Dr. Natalie Hartenbaum. Dr. Hartenbaum is president and chief medical officer of Occumedics, is the past president of the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, and most importantly to our industry, literally wrote the book on DOT physicals. This is what Dr. Hartenbaum had to say in terms of the near term, long term, and perhaps even permanent permutations of the coronavirus crisis on the trucking industry. Doctor, in our webinar today, we're looking at some of the changes that will be going forward. Those both in the near term and the long term from your perspective, expert in occupational medicine and literally wrote the book on DOT physicals. What do you see as the near term impact, implications from an occupational medicine standpoint with regard to our trucking industry? Well, I think there's a couple of major changes, major bottlenecks we're going to be running into. June 30th is the extension for getting a commercial driver medical exam for those drivers that had them as of March 1st, who were not new drivers, who didn't have um, other types of waivers or exemptions or problems. And, and by the way, waivers, and, not waivers, exemptions are still being issued during this time. And there's been a number uh, that have been announced. But drivers are required to have their exams right now by June 30th. So if you all wait till June 30th to get their exams, there's going to be a real bottleneck in trying to get them done. Now, while the states have 90 days whenever that emergency declaration ends to get back in, in um, compliance, uh, you know, we, this may be extended, that June 30th may be extended, and the states may have 90 days from whenever it's extended to, but it's still not going to be forever, and there's going to be a lot of people trying to get those examinations in a very short period of time. Keep in mind that those who do not have current medical certifications will still need to get them. They can't be certified now. And if they haven't found a place to do it, they may go that route. Um, one of the things I've seen and I'm not exactly comfortable with is the telehealth. It's fine for a, is your cold better? It's fine for a, check your blood pressure and let me see the reading on your blood pressure cuff. You know, it's fine for my toe looks swollen and you hold a toe up and you can look at it through Zoom or Skype or Facebook or FaceTime, I'm sorry. But the problem is you really can't do a commercial driver medical exam purely by a video conference. And I know some places have been attempted to do that. And, you know, FMCSA several years ago did respond. And if you don't mind, I want to read something, which is a response from FMCSA on the use of telemedicine. And, and clearly, the official policy of FMCSA is that telemedicine is not prohibited by statute or the rule. The examination must be conducted by a medical examiner who's on the NRCMA, makes sense, at the other end of the monitor. The extent of this is the telemedicine setups in most hospitals and most more advanced healthcare systems, where you have the licensed healthcare professional, the physician on one end, and an assistant, a technician, someone else on the other end with the patient who can check the blood pressure, who can check the vision, who can check the hearing, who can actually put a stethoscope on the chest and then move it to the back, who can actually palpate, whether there's tactile gloves you can put on the abdomen to feel it or not. It's not just simply a look at and talk to, it's not just the interview. And then the response goes on. Um, at the other end of the monitor is a person who is with the driver who is not required to be on the registry um, if consistent with state laws. Every state law is a little different as far as what's accepted by telehealth. The individual at the other end with the driver would be assisting the examiner who would be telepresent at the medical certification examination. So again, the intent for the telemedicine commercial driver medical exam is not just a FaceTime, not just Skype, not just Zoom. There needs to be somebody with the driver who actually is doing an examination and then able to appropriately share that information with the, um, place, the individual on the registry. Any other near-term impacts we have, doctor, from an occupational health standpoint? Well, again, I think just like the exams have been put off, most drug testing has not been waived. It still needs to be done, but there is some leeway and understanding, especially when it comes to the random testing. So those companies that have drivers due for random testing can catch up. They have to meet their required amount by the end of the year, and they theoretically should by the end of the quarter, but as long as they make that reasonable good faith effort to get it done by the quarter, 
they will have to get it done by the end of the year and something unless something else significantly changes um, in the interim. And doctor, uh, how about long term? Do you see many or any of these things continuing with us, uh, be it the testing, DOT physicals, or even the PPE for drivers or any changes in how we do things? Well, I think there's going to be a lot of changes in how we do things in general. I think that the, whether we call it PPE, personal protective equipment, which is more of an OSHA term, or just really good hygiene, I think masks are going to continue for quite some time. I think we're going to really change how we greet each other. I think the handshake may be going away. Um, I do think there's going to be a need for temperature checks, at least potentially in some places. Some Many states are mandating that right now, and many states are mandating masks when you go out in public. Um, I do think that enhanced cleaning for quite some time will be a way of doing business. Um, you know, I think the social distancing is going to be going on for some time, whether it is the six feet or whether it becomes a little bit less groups of no more than 25, groups no more than 50. Um, so I, I think in doing business going to be a lot of things that are going to change. I think from a supply chain, I think we're seeing some problems now. Hopefully that will ease up over time. I do think that there may be a change in the need. For different types of products because I, I think that there's going to be just changes in how we live. Um, as far as the exams itself, I think we may possibly see less examiners. Um, I see some concerns. I have some significant concerns. The Medical Review Board is meeting tomorrow and two of the big topics is on the seizure standard. Um, they're looking at putting into a effect essentially a study to look at relaxing the seizure st uh, standard, maybe eliminating the seizure exemption very much like what had been done by the insulin criteria. Um, I, I do have some very serious concerns, reservations, about having examiners purely make that decision based on what the treating providers tell them without that more in-depth guidance, that more in-depth review of the driver's history and understanding the treatment and diagnosis of seizure disorders. Um, the other so this, this decision would potentially be in the hands of the examiner who would perform the DOT physical uh, as to whether or not that individual be qualified despite a history of seizures, though? Correct. It'd be very, it may be very much like the insulin standard, right. which, which, or the diabetes standard, which was really changed to the treating clinician and the examining physician, you know, in, in conjunction to make that final decision. I'm not that uncomfortable with those examiners who really understand diabetes, who have treated uh, insulin dependent or insulin taking diabetics who understand the long-term complications, really get an understanding of, well, he's probably okay for fill-in-the-blank time, and then we need to recheck and make sure he's okay. So, you know, that's kind of my concern. Every seizure is not the same. Every seizure medication is not the same. Every individual with a seizure is not the same. So it's really being able to understand that and integrate that into your certification decision. I just think it's really important, and I have concerns about having some examiners making that decision. How about the medical exam handbook, doctor? Where do we stand with that? Well, that's been in progress. There's actually a medical review board meeting tomorrow, as I mentioned, where they're looking at another, I think it's probably the second or third attempted draft of that medical examiner handbook. Um, again, very concerned. It is very sparse. It's down by, to 75 pages from about 260. Uh, it has very little true guidance. It basically describes a number of conditions and says these are some of the problems that might occur. It does not include the do not certify if. It does not include a waiting period. It does not include recommendations for recertifications for a significant number of conditions. Um, it doesn't even mention non-insulin taking diabetes. The only diabetes mentioned in the draft handbook is that is insulin taking diabetics. And, and just really goes directly from the new uh, standards for that. It still includes a lot of very obscure, infrequently encountered diagnosis and treatments, for example, Epstein's anomaly for congenital heart disease. It doesn't include some of the more common congenital heart diseases we may see nowadays. Um, and same thing with treatments. Lithium's included, but most of the benzodiazepines that we see used by drivers are not. Um, references some of the medical expert panel recommendations, but not most of them. So I, I think it still needs a lot of work. I hope it is not uh, approved as a final draft, but you know, we'll see what happens. Sounds great. Any, anything else in the offing in general in terms of physicals, drug and alcohol or uh, occupational health from a driver's standpoint or trucking standpoint, doctor? 
you know, I think it's really important that the exams be done properly, that the exams be done by someone who really understands. Uh, myself, my colleagues, we can't tell you how many times we run into a driver where we are the first to diagnose a medical condition, whether it's heart disease or diabetes or high blood pressure, or even uh, listen to something abnormal in the neck that may indicate the driver's at risk of stroke. It's important to get a good examiner, someone who cannot just you know, regurgitate what's on the DOT physical exam form, but understands how to diagnose conditions. You can really look at your medications and say, you know, these are great, but are you talking to your doctors? And does every doctor know all the medications you're taking? Doctor A knows med A, Doctor B knows med B, but those two meds and I may not work well together. And in many cases, it is the commercial driver and medical examiner that will pull those things together for you. As far as drug testing, um, there's the the clearinghouse is now in effect. There is a proposed rule that's probably coming out in the next couple of days, looking at actually tying the commercial driver's license to the results of the drug testing, having states actually take action on that. So, you know, and querying that and, and changing it. So that may change things a little bit. Um, what else? You know, I, I just think it's going to be a lot of trying to catch up to all the ground that we've lost over the past uh, couple of months, right. of getting exams and drug testing done. Doctor, as always, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, too.